Chief Dan George talked of the beauty of the trees, the softness of the air, the fragrance of the grass. He said, they speak to me. He went on to say the trail of the sun and the life that never goes away. They speak to me, and my heart soars. The forest, according to Paul Wolben, is a social network connected by a wood wide web. In his book, The Hidden Life of Trees, he says trees talk to one another. They share food, they take care of one another, and they support each other. He says it's no surprise that the saddest trees are those trees that have been isolated and enslaved in human constructed systems. Those trees lose their ability to communicate and connect. The result is compromised health and a shorter lifespan. So too with humans. We know the devastating impacts of isolation on babies. We know the devastating impact on communities that are cut off or worse, intentionally isolated. Canada's Indian Act isolated First Nations in a way that has compromised their health and life expectancy. Dr. Rosaline Miles thought, what better way to take a step towards better health and reconciliation than in a rainforest? Working with a wide range of healthcare and sports organizers and organizations, she launched the Rainforest Trail Run, a five kilometer event that celebrates First Nations cultures and promotes wellness through movement. The inaugural event took place on Sunday, the 29th of September, 2019, and was immediately proclaimed a great success. As a great success in a way of coming together and as a step towards reconciliation. We invited Dr. Rosaline Miles to join us for a conversation that matters about the healing power of a community in motion in the cradle of Mother Nature. Conversations That Matter is a partner program of the Center for Dialogue at Simon Fraser University. The production of this program is made possible thanks to the following and viewers like you. Please become a patron at conversationsthatmatter.tv. Dr. Rosalind Miles, mm -hmm. welcome to Conversations That Matter. Thank you. And this is a conversation that matters. We're talking mm -hmm. about the role of uh, health and wellness, especially its relationship to physical activity. Mm -hmm. For everyone, but in particular in Indigenous communities. Right. From your perspective, how important is it that we continue to promote physical activity and its connection to wellness for Indigenous people? Okay, well, first I'd like to recognize the traditional territory we're on. Thank you very much. Of uh, the yes. Musqueam, Silichu, and Squamish people. Um, I'm a visitor here. I'm from Lytton First Nation. And um, it's extremely important. So when we think about physical activity, we define it as sports, recreation, fitness and traditional activities and for us ties to being physically active is also tied to holistic health and wellness uh -huh. so spiritual emotional mental and physical health and wellness so um uh, physical activity brings us a sense of belonging to the land to our community and from an indigenous perspective we really try to promote physical activity from a family-centered approach and practicing being active, whether it's fitness walking or whether it's harvesting, you know, um, traditional foods off the land or getting out um, to supporting each other at a sports event. So mm -hmm. uh, it's extremely important for us to kind of go back to our cultural and traditional ways and uh, restore that, you know, cultural identity for our people. Well, it was an identity that was involved in the, the business of, of uh, gathering food every day and moving around, <laughs> right. it, it demanded physical activity. But yeah. of course, we know that the impact of colonialization had been to sequester uh, indigenous people onto uh, tightly confined parcels of land yeah. and say, you stay there. Yeah. Uh, and with that comes a deterioration in the a relationship that individuals would have with a physical movement. Mm -hmm. The challenge of colonization mm -hmm. was that people were segregated yeah. onto reserves, and you were not allowed to leave the reserves without an Indian agent giving you approval. Yeah. And our, the residential schools existed till 1992. You know, uh, know, in Canada, and my father was one of the. You know, he attended St. George's, which was open until 1979. And so people were not allowed to even go home, you know, yeah. and uh, they were not allowed to go to see their mom and dads. So they were not allowed to leave their reserves. And so um, the impact of colonization was harsh 
uh, the trauma, the abuses, the rapes, it was harsh on every level. There's people who are younger than myself who um, attended these schools and their spirits were broken. Yeah. And, and I think that um, healing is different for each person. Uh, depending on their ties to the land, ties to the culture, it's shown that people, when they have greater ties to where they're from, mm-hmm. uh, wh- whatever culture you're from, you will um, heal um, in a much holistic, more holistic way. Yeah. Um, and I think that is important for, um, you know, some people may not heal. So sometimes, you, you know, you can't go in a place where you're going to try to fix people. And what you need to do is accept them for where they're at. Love unconditionally. You know, yeah. and I think that's, if you're loved unconditionally, mm-hmm. and I love you, you're going to want to rise to the occasion. You yes. know, I said, let's go for a hike, you know, and you'd be like, oh, why, you know, that's kind of one of the things of being inclusive, bringing right. the family together and outings versus it being, you need to walk 10,000 steps to prevent diabetes. That doesn't have a lot of meaning to most people. So having ties to family, then ties to community, that's how we promote being physically active. Got to get you to hang on for a second while we take a quick commercial break. We'll be right back. Conversations That Matter is brought to you by Audlem Brown, a client-focused investment firm that starts client relationships with straightforward conversations focused on you, your aspirations, and your investment priorities. Audlem Brown has been a supporter of Conversations That Matter from the day we started this show. Their only condition was that we provide a non-biased conversation with people from all sides of all sorts of issues. And of course, we couldn't produce this show without the support of Oh Boy Productions. If you're looking to produce a show like this one, I suggest you reach out to Oh Boy. They can help you produce it, and they can help you build your audience. And we also need your support. I ask you to please pledge $1 per show by going to conversationsthatmatter.tv slash donate because those dollars add up and play an important role in helping us produce this show. Now, back to the show. You know, as you were talking about the history of Mm -hmm. uh, really restrictive movement, I uh, recall going to the movie Indian Horse. Mm-hmm. And uh, about the fellow who became quite an accomplished hockey player, and mm-hmm. the like, the school itself wasn't going to let him play until they realized how good he was. Mm-hmm. Um, so, how do you then say to others, "Okay, yeah, get involved," when the system is working against you? And then you watch the way that he was treated within, yeah. you know, the ranks of uh, even ju- like junior and semi-professional hockey. Yeah, and and it. You know, it drove him away from what could have been a much healthier uh, outcome in his life. Yeah. Uh, and and so when you have to take all that on as well, mm-hmm. you can see that there were, were those restrictions. Fortunately, <laughs> well, maybe I hope we've moved beyond that. Yeah. But, but it's still <laughs> early days. And, yeah. and, and so there has to be this appreciation of all yeah. that sport can break down barriers and, and provide us uh, and sport and activity can pro- provide us access to opportunity. Mm-hmm. And I, I think the main thing is, is like, you know, with the Rainforest Trail Run, <clears throat> reconciliation is bringing people together, Indigenous and non-Indigenous. For, so there's more uh, exchange of knowledge and experiences. And so that you can um, be there to do things that are empowering, that are fun, that are strength based versus it kind of being, oh, well, we'll do a run just for, you know, and we may have some drummers there or something like that and say it's truth and reconciliation. Mm -hmm. Really having people be part of like a running program, a fitness program, walking program, and making sure that's inclusive, that children can do it. So moms can bring their little children and do it. You know, um, they're elders and and, um, it's something that's really just fun, you know, And, and I think that building our youth up to be proud of where they're from and being there for our children and uh, in a physically active way is the most powerful thing you can do. Um, I, I believe that I'm very narrow-minded. I think sports <laughs> solves everything, like suicide, um, gang prevention, pregnancy, addictions. Um, it gives kids a sense of belonging. So I think um, sports, recreation, fitness, and traditional activities does those social 
um, uh, support systems for communities that might not have it. Well, that's know. because we know that once you start to exercise, there are a host of positive right. uh, chemical reactions that happen in your yeah. body. Reduction of anxiety, mm-hmm. reduction of depression, re- reduction of stress. So um, going for a walk, for example, um, which is a low intensity, low impact, repetitive um, activity, it helps with meditative thinking. It helps with problem solving. So everyone knows that if you go for a walk for 20 minutes, forget about physical fitness or prevention d- disease, you feel better. And so if I have something in my mind, I'll go for a walk. And then by the end of the, the walk, I'll go, oh, I kind of have my answer. You know, and I think that's something my grandmother said, like weaving things that are very like repetitive. Yes. We can disengage from that whole um, physical component of it, like swimming or walking or even weaving or knitting. It helps with problem solving. Mm-hmm. And so. And, and <clears throat> neuroscience has backed that up now. We know it to be true. So what your grandmother knew okay. instinctively <laughs> or intuitively, yeah. neuroscience has said, yes, that's exactly what happens. <laughs> and we, we did a questionnaire with youth and we asked them, what, what, how do they see being physically active? And I was actually really surprised to hear that they actually want to do things with their elders. Because hmm. there's, there's teachings there. And that's one thing we've been, lo- been lost with um, social media nowadays is that people, they're, they're, they're texting their friends too much. You know, they're, they're going for their friends' approval. And we really want to kind of disengage from the screen and bring the ties back to their family. So you touched on, uh, well, no, no, it's just, I don't want to lose the fact that we also want to promote uh, the run, the, yeah. uh, the Rainforest Trail run, yeah. which was it the first run this year? Or, yeah, it was inaugural, yeah. Uh, the, and how to go? It was awesome. It yeah. was a great run. We had people um, all the way from Chehalis, uh, which is fantastic. We had people from Musqueam. We had people from downtown Eastside, from UBC. Um, so it was really a, a lot of fun. It was all ages there. And so they had 400 people come out for their first run, which is fantastic. So I was reading that you talk about the role that sport and physical yeah. activity uh, can play in reconciliation. And you've touched yeah. on that already. Yeah. L- let's uh, spend a bit more time mm-hmm. talking about how powerful that is and why it's important, especially in light of the Truth and Reconciliation yeah. Commission, which recommends that we embrace yeah. far more engaged activity and sport mm-hmm. and physical activity gives us that opportunity. The biggest challenge I have is when you think about reserves, which are First Nations, um, we don't have access to the same funding when it comes to building a recreation center, right. a swimming pool. We have no funding, you know, it used to be INAC and now it's Indigenous Services Canada for recreation workers. Um, so we don't, we're not supported to promote physical activity for Mm -hmm. our communities and also, um, and the people who should be leading this program are not parents, but they should be the teenagers and the youth, you know, having after school care programs. And my question is why not? And then average Canadian Mm non-Indigenous says, well, you guys don't pay taxes. (laughs) So my challenge is in British Columbia, I want to ask the question is how much Resources have been removed off of non-treaty land, crown land, um, around forestry, around mining, around fishing, etc. Um, have been taken from just BC. And for example, you know, I belong from Lytton First Station. The, this crown land has been all along the Coquihalla. You look at Vancouver Island, the crown is actively logging, 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 logging. And my comment is we pay. We pay. All the land we lost, we have 56 reserves in Lytton. It's all surrounded by crown land that's been logged and so on. They've taken all that money out. None of it's gone back to the community. Mm-hmm. You know, and we, we, you have the funding that you get from INAG according to your population. But it's just only on the things they want us to spend it on. Right. And none of it's for sports. None of it's for recreation. It's all about preventing, you know, like, or dealing with disease um, versus being promoting physical activity. Mm-hmm. So that's one of the challenges I have when it comes. So you do have the truth and reconciliation, the calls to action around improving access to sports for Indigenous communities. However, where has the dollars been for infrastructure, for capital, you know, for, for communities and to maintain them? So, right. you, you know, um, uh, Roger Adolph said in, in the 1970s, all the communities got a swimming pool but they didn't have any money to, to clean them. They didn't have any money to, to have lifeguards. They had nothing, they had no money for staff. So what do you think happened to the swimming pools, right? Well, they basically yeah. became unusable. They, they filled them out with dirt, yeah. made them box gardens or something, you know? And, yeah. and, and it's not that 
um, you know, the stereotypes I, I heard growing up were just horrific about Indigenous people. Like, you know, and, and it caused a lot of shame. You always say, oh, those Indians are this and that. You know, when I was born, I was an Indian, you know, and then I became a Native. And I was in the First Nations, and then I was Aboriginal, and now I'm Indigenous. So yeah. our labels keep changing. Right. Um, but the, the things that, the other names I heard were really horrific, you know, yes. around... Um, uh, especially First Nations women, you know, they, you know, they're single parents, they have kids, they're, you know, they're promiscuous and, and or um, so that we don't have a lot of support, you right. know. And, and so even, as you say, you now live in the greater Vancouver area yeah. on Musqueam land. Yeah. You have access if you can get to swimming pools and tracks and gym right. all that. <laughs> In principle, you do. Yeah. The act of getting there and being accepted in that environment is still another oh, challenge. Oh, you know, I, <laughs> I, I was spending some time um, with family last week, and we were together in a restaurant, and everyone was visibly looking for nations. And I was, it was really interesting to me to watch the treatment. You know, the waitresses weren't happy. They were, they kind of, it was a very kind of, you're yeah. not welcome here. And, and it's true, you know, and I was in the hospital once in an emergency and the, the lady beside me, you know, she was from Musqueam and the doctor was talking to her like as if she couldn't hear. When was the last time? And I thought, and so I videotaped it. And I thought, how can he talk? To, and he was the same doctor who treated me and he was talking to us differently. And um, so I was, and, I, and when he left, I talked to her. I said, you know, I'm First Nations too. And yeah. Uh, she, goes, uh, she goes, that's why I don't go see medical care, because I get treated like, as if I don't care for myself. I find it horrifying, and I mm -hmm. wish that we were uh, much further down the road oh, to yeah. reconciliation than we are. But what interested me in having you in here mm -hmm. as a guest is how can we help use what you're doing, the work that you're doing, yeah. to, you know, as, to, to borrow a phrase from Perry Bellegarde, close the gap a bit. Yeah. Uh, that, that huge chasm between societies. So how can we, mm -hmm. knowing that there are thousands of barriers in the way, mm -hmm. what are the ways that we can uh, collectively mm -hmm. help to in, in, encourage greater cooperation and greater activity? I, I think having initiatives like, you know, the Rainforest Trail Run that is accessible for youth, for Indigenous youth to, to participate in, um, is fantastic. And having things like that that are no cost, having training opportunities for youth to become recreation leaders, mm -hmm. you know, if they live in Vancouver, so they have access, you know, not, it's very difficult now for, you know, individuals to get into university, it's very competitive. Um, and having, you know, and it takes time for our Indigenous youth to get their self-worth up too, you know, and, and, and that. Okay, so yeah. that touches on a really interesting point. When you are physically active, and we talked mm -hmm. about that host of chemicals yeah. that get uh, uh, released, what role does that physical confidence play in your overall sense of self? I, I think that role is, is vital in a sense of knowing that you're healthy, that you have integrity, you practice what you preach. So when you're healthy, you're walking the talk. You know, when you belong to a sports team, you belong to a group of people, you feel that you are, there's possibilities, you know, because if you're successful in sports, you may be able, I could also maybe be successful in education or at a job, you know, and so I've learned some skills about being there on time, you know, fair sports play and, and possibly being a champion of some, you know, some on some level. And so I think that having that for youth is vital, you know, and, and um, you know, there's, but the barriers are cost, you know, and transportation and having parents taking you to the sport games and, and all those things, you know, and um, I think having youth in sports is really going to be a win-win for Canada, for the youth and for the family. I'm reminded of a um, piece that I was doing quite a number of years ago, mm -hmm. with Penticton band mm -hmm. and there was a young man who had gone through an educational program i yeah. said to him so if you were talking to a, another young uh aboriginal person mm -hmm. and they were thinking eh, do i take this program what would you say to them and he said well i tell them to take the program and this is a guy had, yeah. who initially i didn't think was going to talk to me he seemed incredibly yeah. shy um and and i said so why what's the thing that you get the most uh, out of this and he went oh self-confidence yeah i followed up and said well why is that important and yeah. he said, well, and it's such a beautiful quote. I wish I had his name because he deserves <laughs> to be credited for this. Yeah. He says, because self-confidence is like wildfire. 
Oh, I like that. Yeah. Once you have it, you have mm-hmm. no idea where it will take you. Mm-hmm. And I think that this is really what you are um, and, and sharing. I, I, and I think with our youth, you know, the struggles are real. Oh. And, <laughs> and however, we're resilient. Yes. And so you take those things and go, I, I not just th- survived, but I made it through and I came through, I thrived after a, an incident, whatever challenges you're going through, whether it's your parents separating or whether not feeling at school or whether losing a friend to suicide or whatever the challenges are, we're resilient. And that's one thing that Indigenous people, we're still here and we're not just still here, we're thriving. Yes. You know, and, uh, you know, I, I, my family is fantastic. We're all done, been very successful in our own ways. And, you know, we all went, you know, bought our own houses. We're, we're thriving and we're, and we're giving back to our people. We're giving back to our community. And knowing that for the youth to have that hope and knowing that we're resilient, sometimes you go through these challenges, they make you who you are. Mm-hmm. And if I didn't go through all the struggles I went through as a youth, I would not have been able to go to Florida and be a football coach and walk on the field and say, everyone, let's go. You know, I would not have had that. I had no fear because I thought, this is nothing compared to what I've been through, you know? <laughs> and so when you, when you have that ownership, it's like, you know, um, right. and just having that ability to have that confidence that you have survived and you've been through things that other people would never can't even imagine, you know, and, and have that shake you in your strength and, uh, and have the ties to your family, knowing that um, things do work out, you know? Mm-hmm. So, to, to end on, uh, on this, I, only because we're already out of time, yeah. um, is I, I read a fascinating article about mm-hmm. uh, the aggregation of marginal gains. And that if we focus on just doing little things rather than saying, no, no, yeah. you've got to make this great leap, it's manageable, we can do it. Yeah. And over time, all of a sudden, we take a look at ourselves and go, oh mm-hmm. my gosh. Mm-hmm my life has improved. And, and so is, is this what you're saying? Don't, don't think you have to come out and run 5k right away. Yeah. Walk around the block. Yeah. Oh, completely. You yeah. know, when we did training at Musqueam, we had it. So we did the block so that elders can come with us yeah. and it might take them twice as long to do the two kilometer walk, but their youth were, come on, you can do it. Grandma. They'd run by her. Oh, come on, keep going grandma. So, and they kept seeing her yeah. go. And so in Christian, like, if she can do this, I can do this, right? And so she was really inspired to be included. So you don't have these big, long, that it it beats people up and they can't participate. You want to have things where it's accessible, it's easy, it's inclusive, and it's really just fun. You know, so that's really important for... Um, and, and I think with the 5K um, trail run, I remember uh, Joy Chalmers did it, and she's this amazing woman with Pacific Native Women's Association. She goes, oh, I'm just here to cheer on some of the youth. And she had her stroller. I'm just going to go for five minutes. I'll be right back. And I said, okay, Joy, you know, because she's like thinking 5K. And then I thought, where does she go? And, and uh, she took my daughter with her. And I thought, <laughs> you know, she said, oh, we'll be back in five minutes. And they did the whole 5K. And she wow. said it was so much fun because, you know, there's trees and there's distractions. And, and um, I was, she did it. It was like yeah. no problem. And I think being in nature is, is way, and she was with people that she knew, you right. know, and she, she was there to cheer people on. And by her doing it, I was just kind of like, wow, like, you know, um, it's, it's inspiring, you know. Isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And let's hope that more and more people are inspired to get involved. Yeah, no, for yeah. sure. Yeah, that's great. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thanks very nice much for coming in and doing yeah. this. Thanks for your time.